In this video we want to talk about geometric constraints. One important difference between a freehand sketch, you know, with a pad, paper, pencil, and a CAD sketch using a program like Inventor, the lines of a CAD sketch can be drawn perfectly straight with start and end points that occur in exact locations in space. By using numeric dimensional constraints, a line may also be given precise length, place a specific distance from another sketch feature, or constrained to be oriented at a specific angle from another straight line. By applying geometric constraints, a line can be made perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical. If more than one line is being sketched, they can be made perfectly parallel or perpendicular. They can be made collinear. They could have equal length. Lines can be constrained to be tangent to circles, for example, or to arcs. Or two circles could be constrained to be concentric. In order to precisely model a part, the designer must be able to use dimensional and geometric constraints within the CAD program. You have already used linear dimensioning in earlier activities. In this activity, you will learn about geometric constraints. This is an important set of skills that are common to most CAD programs, and you'll be practicing and applying these constraints to CAD sketches. After you open up the document Geometric Constraints, Activity 5.2a, uh, you should go ahead and, of course, follow all the steps of this procedure. Make sure that you open the file called Geometric Constraints and that you complete each of the 12 exercises by closely looking at the diagrams and following all the instructions. When you're finished, of course, you're going to save this as Geometric Constraints, your initials. That's for the drawing diagram that looks like this. Okay, this is what it's going to look like when you get started. And in the Word document, we have examples of that. So here it is at the beginning. And when you're finished, it will look similar to this one here. Of course, it's going to have your name. But the features here, these constraints that are demonstrated, in our version, they're a little bit different because this is made with an older version of Inventor, not a 2016 version. So let's get to it. Let's go ahead and look at Inventor. So give you a couple hints on how to get started here. So first off, there's already a sketch here. These are already sketched. You don't need to create a new sketch. So see here, it says sketch number one. So you need to right click on sketch one and click edit. Now we can edit this sketch that's here in this drawing format. You've already used dimension, right? That's how you make a dimensional constraint. Now we need to follow these geometric constraint tools and find the correct one for each one of the steps we want to take. For example, this one's tangent. And there's actually instructions here on how the tangent works. And of course, you also want to pay attention to the Word document. Because here, it shows the before and it shows the after. And we want to make sure our after looks like this. So let's take and we're going to make this perpendicular. So which one of these looks like the perpendicular? Well, that one right there. That one there looks perpendicular. And sure enough, if we hover over it, it says perpendicular constraint. That must be the one we want. Now, that's great. Now there's two different results we can get with this. If we click this line, first or this line first, it's going to behave differently depending on which line we click first. So let's try this line and this line. You can see that the second line is the one that stayed in the same location. So it made the first line that we clicked perpendicular to the second line. The second line stayed in place, the first line moved. Let's go back to our drawing. Is that what we wanted? That looks pretty good. Looks not quite the same though. 
Yeah, it doesn't look quite the same. So what if we undo this and instead we go back to perpendicular and we click this line first and the bottom line second. Hmm, interesting. Ah, there we go. That looks the same. Now you notice there's a little constraint tool uh, shown right here that shows that we're on, that we made this perpendicular. All right, oop, I hit OK and it went away. How do I get it to go back? Well, in the procedures it says to show all constraints. You could do that here by right clicking and going right down here to where it says show all constraints. It's also the F8 key. And now that perpendicular shows up. Now you notice we use the undo. That will work if we just want to undo the last thing or the last two things we did. So what happens to students is maybe they'll perform this one, trying to make these parallel, but they won't do it right. And then they'll go on to this one, and they get that one right, and then they get this one right, and then they realize, oh, this one's wrong. Well, when they hit undo, they undo everything they did between this step and where they were at. So you want to be careful. You should check each one as you go to make sure that they look right. So let's look at that. making three lines parallel to one another. Well, that was pretty straightforward. I think you can do that one by using the parallel. All right, there's the parallel geometric constraint right there. Let's try one that the kids have a little bit more trouble with, and that's the second one. You need to perform these steps in order. Don't skip around, or things won't look right. So, and of course they abbreviate here. And this is common in blueprinting that people make abbreviations. So you have to read into it. So dim, dim, dim number three to, well, you know that's diagonal two inches. So that must be dimension, right? Dim, dimension. So we need to dimension number three. This is circle number three, not the number three, but circle number three. All right, you can't make that number, th we're not gonna drag that number three and make it two inches in size. We're gonna make the circle two inches. And if you go back to our example, you can see, look at that. There's circle three, and you can see that it's much, much larger than the other two, and larger than where we started. So, dimension, click on the circle. You can see we're at 0.736, make that two inches. Boom. All right, very good. Next step, fix circles one and two. We want to fix them. Well, if you look up here, there's a little feature that's called fix. It looks like a lock. It's going to lock them in place or fix. So we want to click on circle one. That fixes that in place. Then click on circle two, fix that in place. So let's go back to our list here, dimension number three to diameter of two inches, did that. Fix circles one and two, we did that. Now make three tangent to one and two. Well, we want tangent. Students often forget what tangent means. Tangent means that the line or cord touches a circle at only one point. Well, there's a little drawing that looks like that. See, there's a circle and there's a line right there, and they touch at only one point that one's tangent. So number one and number two are already locked in place. So number three has to move no matter what order we click them in. So we click one and two, one and three, I apologize. We click one and three and now they're tangent and we click two and three and they're tangent. So go ahead and proceed through these. Remember, these are the geometric constraints right here. These are the ones you're going to be using uh, for all of these. Follow the instructions. So when it says here, fix point C, it's talking about the center of circle C. And then it says, make endpoints A and B coincident. It's talking about lines A and lines B, all right? Not the point where the A and the B are, all right? That little point is just a way to hold that B in place and that A in place or that C in place. It's talking about the geometric features, right? So fixed point C, that's the circle.
right? Fix the circle in place. And then for the endpoints, it's going to be the endpoint of A, endpoint of B, and so on. All right? The last step, they said, is to put your name down here at the bottom, right? Down here. And there'll be room once you get all three of these circles in a row. So you can see they have John Doe, and you can see this little square there, like I was talking about, that anchors that in place. So you're going to do that up here in text. So right there it says text. When you click that, you're going to draw a square. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So one click, I held and dragged it to the right. I let go, and a little dialog box is going to pop up. So here we could type our name. Now it's not going to come out very large. See it says 0 0.120. That's ah, pretty teeny. So make sure you highlight the text and it only gives you a smaller choice. You could type in anything you want here. So let's try 0 0.5. See what happens. I hit OK. And there we go. So 0 0.5 is a pretty good size. Now, if I try and make this box bigger, I'm still on text. So if I click now, I'm just going to make another text box. So I should say right click, OK. And now I can see I, if I hover over Robot Readinger, now I'm highlighting the box. I clicked on it once, and now I can drag this and I can make it a little bit bigger. If I want to get Robot Readinger all one line, I can move it around if I want. So that's how you manipulate that text box. All right, very good. I look forward to seeing your results.